Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about limitations to MTA performance. So while we are working with the MTA radar, what are the different parameters that affects the performance of MTA radar? We are going to see in this topic. What is the purpose of MTA radar? MTA radar is nothing but moving target indicator. It is especially designed for the detection of moving targets among the large number of clutters. Moving target among large number of clutters. Okay, when you consider clutter, clutter is nothing but a stationary target. Clutter is nothing but a stationary target. Suppose consider two trees. Okay, what I want to say is, what do you mean by clutter and what do you mean by moving target? Consider two trees and a target. This is our target which is in motion. This is the thing we need. Okay. Now, when we are transmitting a signal onto this area, we will get back the received signal from this tree and this tree and as well as this original target. Okay. Now, suppose if these two trees are stationary without any movement in them, then we can clearly say that the moving target information, we can clearly get the moving target information from this empty radar. Okay among these three received echo signals but suppose consider lot of air is there heavy, heavy wind is there then trees are also in movement trees are also in movement they can move this side and this side okay swingings will be there so the movement in the tree leaves may cause the reflected echo signal keep on changing hope you understand what i'm saying until and unless there is a wind Definitely the tree is in stationary, but heavy winds may cause the leaves of the tree may move because of that the received echo signal from that stationary target may also lead to movement. Then how to identify the moving target among large number of clusters? Then the radar system should have high resolution compared to the basic and standard MT radar. Okay, so this type of information leads to limitations in the performance of MTA radar. So the improvement in the signal to clutter ratio. So we need original movement of the target signal to clutter ratio. Okay, like your signal to noise ratio, how you are identifying signal to noise ratio uh, among uh, the original signal, what is the amount of noise? Here also among the original required signal, what is the amount of unwanted signals present? So the, the improvement in signal to clutter ratio of an MTA radar is affected by the factors other than the design of the Doppler signal processor. This is this leads to limitations of this one. Instabilities of the transmitter and receiver, what are the different factors that affects this MTA radar performance? So those are instabilities in the transmitter and receiver. Physical motion of the clutters, this is what I have explained now. Physical motion of the clutters. Physically, they are moving. Actually, in the, the tree is not supposed to move until and unless there is a wind. Okay. So, we are taking simply it is a stationary target, but we cannot, unfortunately, due to the other factors, we cannot consider it as a stationary target. So, physical motion of the clutters, instabilities in the transmitter and receiver, finite time on the target and limiting the receiver, limiting in the receiver can all affect it from the performance of the MTA radar. So original performance of the MTA radar is going to be deviated with all these effects. Let us see what are the different parameters that we should consider when we are having the influence on this effect on this MTA radar. So the first factor is MTA improvement factor. Okay, I will explain the definitions of each and every parameter here. So MTA improvement factor the signal to clutter ratio at the output of MTA system divided by the signal to clutter ratio at the input averaged over all the target radial velocities of interest. See, suppose if you are taking the MTA radar here, what is the amount of signal to clutter ratio here? What is the amount of signal to clutter ratio here? So this is the output signal to clutter ratio. This is the input signal to clutter ratio. So the ratio of this one, so MTI improvement factor, we can write it as IF, improvement factor is equal to signal to clutter ratio of output of the MTI radar to the signal to clutter ratio of input of the MTI radar. 
so when we are seeing this definition we can get the definition like uh, noise figure what is the amount of noise figure signal to noise ratio of output of the receiver to the signal to noise ratio there it is input by output here it is output by input it, because it really it is used to evaluate the performance of the empty radar okay so what is the amount of clutter ratio present over the output of the empty radar divided by clutter present in the input of the empty radar this decides the improvement factor of the empty radar next factor is sub clutter visibility sub clutter visibility the ratio by which the target echo may be weaker than the coincident clutter echo power and still be detected with the specified pd and pfa what do you mean by pd and pfa pd is nothing but probability of detection pd is nothing but probability of detection probability of detection what do you mean by pfa probability of false alarm probability of detection and probability of false alarm the ratio by which the target echo may be weaker the target echo may be weaker than the coincident clutter echo power and still be detected with the specified pb pd and pfa so target echo suppose the target is unable to produce that means it may be at long distance then then what happens it may be at long distance means we are receiving weak echo signals clutters may be at very near position and in such cases the problem is sub clutter visibility two radars with the same sub clutter visibility might not have the same ability to detect the targets in clutter if the resolution cell of one is greater than is is greater and accepts more clutter echo power suppose if we are taking two radar systems with uh, same sub clutter visibility factor we may not have the same ability to detect the targets among the large number of clusters okay because their resolution is different each radar is having specific resolution their own resolution is there okay so that means clusters may have the same strength on to the radar systems but the received target information may be different because of the resolution of the radar systems another one is clutter attenuation clutter attenuation ca so the ratio of clutter power at the canceller output the canceller is nothing but delay line canceller because the output of mt radar is given to delay line canceller to detect the moving target among large number of clusters so ratio of the clutter power at the canceller input to the clutter residue at the output normalize it to the attenuation of a single pulse passing through the unprocessed channel of the clutter canceller see suppose mt radar mt radar mt radar output where we are connecting mt radar output is connecting to delay line canceller mt radar output is connecting to delay line canceller so the input here the ratio of clutter power at the canceller input so what is the amount of clutter power present over here and what is the amount of clutter residue present after the cancellation clutter residue okay that means what is the purpose of delay line canceller delay line canceller is used to eliminate the stationary targets among the received signal okay so how the stationary targets eliminated so that nothing, nothing but clusters are being eliminated by passing through this delay line canceller so our clutter attenuation clutter attenuation name clearly tells that it is used to attenuate this factor it tells how much attenuation is there in the clutter after passing through the delay line canceller so clutter attenuation is nothing but clutter power at the input of delay line canceller divided by clutter residue residue is nothing but what is the left part clutter residue at the output of delay line canceller so this factor decides the amount of clutter residue present over the empty radar next one is cancellation ratio so cancellation ratio is nothing but the ratio of canceller voltage amplification from fixed target echoes received with a fixed antenna 
to the gain for a single pulse passing through the unprocessed channel of the cancellor. Uh, suppose when we are transmitting a single pulse, okay, we are detecting normally we are transmitting number of pulses. Suppose uh, what is the resultant echo signal that we are receiving for a single pulse? That single pulse received echo signal is being considered that ratio of cancellation voltage amplification from the target echoes. Okay, see, this is the transmitted pulse. First, uh, single pulse we are transmitting. What is the amount of received echo signals from the stationary targets we are getting? So that amount is decided by the delay line canceller ratio. Delay line canceller importance. So we have a delay line canceller that is that effectively works to identify the stationary clusters among large number of um, number of targets we are getting. So interclutter visibility. Interclutter visibility is nothing but it is the ability of a empty red or to detect the moving targets which occur in the relatively clear resolution cells between patches of the strong clutter. The clutter echoes, the clutter echo power is usually not uniform if a radar has sufficient resolution. It can see targets in the clear areas between clutter patches. That is what I have explained before. Suppose consider a tree. Tree is having a tree it cannot be considered as a stationary target because if wind comes, definitely the, their leaves may move. So in that situation also, our radar system should be able to detect the moving target among such environment. That means it should have clear and good resolution. Then only it can identify the moving target among such environment. So interclutter visibility is also needed. So the higher the radar resolution, the better the interclutter visibility. Okay, that means if resolution is more, then the interclutter visibility is also high. So, and other among with other these without all these uh, uh, on the top of this, we can also see other limitations, equipment instabilities like transmitter and receiver instabilities, scanning modulations, and uh, interfluctuations of the internal fluctuations of the cutter. So, these are the different uh, parameters, so the different. Uh, uh, factors that should be considered when we are working with the empty radars the, because that leads to limitations in the empty radar performance thank you